Das ist schon egal, das passt. Auch. Und Sie kriegen auch das Bild. Ja. Cool. Und du sagst einfach, please play the clip und so. Ja, 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 ja. Also wir reden ja, wir haben keine Summiere hier, gell? Nein. Cinema 5D Stage at Photo and Adventure is brought to you by Blackmagic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. Rotolite, advanced LED lighting and Canon, live for the story. Welcome to the Photo Adventure 2019 Cinema 5D live film and video stage. Um, you know, hi. Hi Hans, how are you? Hans from Son von Sonntag, you are a director from Germany director of photography as well and uh, you were one of the first people or probably the first person to shoot with the C500 right probably, II. probably yes uh, but you are at a least to my knowledge yeah. yeah but you're a storyteller and you're going to tell us about storytelling in full frame today exactly that's what we're going to do so um, right. so we so let's go to the first uh, slate i need my computer up the screen yeah, great it, yeah. okay um, what are we talking about today? We are talking about storytelling with a new format, full-frame format, which is, to the most of you... Oh, come on. Is it working? Yeah. The most of you is, as a photographer, standard, standard format. But for us film people, it's new. It's pretty new because we've been shooting all the time film vertically, right? This is Russ Mayer, and he's holding a airy... Uh, 3B, I think, and um, as you can see, the film is running vertically through the camera, which creates Super 35, which is approximately APS-C format. That's what we've been shooting with uh, when we make films. Um, here you can see what a full format is, and if you turn that more like, you know, vertically, you can see how it's going to work. Let's see the next slide. There you can see what, what, what film is doing. Cinema film, okay? So you can see the film is running vertically through the uh, camera, and that is what happens on a regular photo camera, stills camera. So what you do see here also is anamorphic, okay? Because the things are, you know, squeezed. And later on the projector, you have to unsqueeze it to get a cinemascope picture. So this been ancient times, and that was the time when I went get, got into the film business. And my first projects, actually 10 years, I shot on 35 mil, most of my stuff, mostly commercials. So in the later time, Vista, Vista Vision was a kind of, you know, um, something between. It was a full format, which, you know, where the cameras were able to, to run the film vertically through the camera. Okay. So that is what we are doing, going to have today. We can shoot vertically. We can shoot full frame digitally on a film camera. Okay, the reason why is this happening now and not, let's say, 10 years ago? That is the question. And the answer is pretty easy. Um, the sensors weren't fast enough for sustained 25 or 24 frames per second. So back then, we, we were actually, you know, we, we need smaller sensors especially when we're shooting overcranked, let's say on 50 frames per second or 60 frames, even 100 frames per second. Okay, the second thing is that there's tons of scene glass around, millions of lenses, not millions, but quite, quite a lot, which don't cover full format. This one, for instance, is one of my ever time favorites. It's a Cook lens, uh, which I actually do own. Um, that was used, for instance, for films like Apocalypse Now, okay? This is a classic lens, which is just amazing how dimensional it renders pictures. It's brilliant. Okay, so um, we, people shooting film, we're always much more into a 35 millimeter format than into full format. So full format is for us a complete new thing, and we have to re reinvent ourselves photographically. 
Um, here you can see it's just an easy picture. Everybody knows how this is going to work, okay? When I get a bigger sensor, uh, assuming the same field of view compared to Super 35, I get less depth of field, okay? So this is basic photography rules, okay? So this means uh, um, with the same pixel pitch means the same size of pixel, we get more resolution. And because we have got more pixels to, uh, to, to manage, um, we get less frames per second, okay? So uh, this has some impacts. And let's talk about these impacts. For instance, what you see is um, backgrounds tend to get more blurry, right? So this may have advantages, but for filmmaking, it does have disadvantages because very often we need the backgrounds for a story. So just to have blurry pictures doesn't cut the mustard really, necessarily. So what you can see here is a classic. She's beautiful young lady and a nice old man, and you don't know where they are. I can tell you, he's somewhere shot in Vietnam, somewhere, you know, in the, in the rainforest, and she is somewhere shot on Mallorca, I think, okay? But you can put them together and you don't know where they are. So for, so for us, the story might be she's his daughter, whatever, but this is definitely not true, okay? We need to know where we are when we do filmmaking. Very different story to photography, really. Okay, so this can be a problem with full format filmmaking. Uh, here you can see a, a shot I took with this camera and the Samira Canon Primes on a little shot I shot and I'm showing you later. Uh, and you can see how this is working. This is a medium close-up shot. And this medium close-up shot has a pretty, pretty strong kind of, um, let's say, uh, um, shallow, shallow de depth of field, which definitely is not the classical depth of field I see when I shoot 35 millimeter. It's much more, okay? But in this case, I like it. I do like it a lot. So what does that mean? The shallow, the more shallow depth of field, it does mean we get focus problems. Okay, some of you might have been, you know, on a set and shot with rockstar focus pullers and they pull things you can't believe. But often times we don't have that. So that can be an issue. And, but on the other side, we can shoot wide shots like that one, for instance, where you can, you know, we've got something in focus and a wide shot and something else out of focus. And this is new. This is really cool and new. And I did this later, I did it on 35 millimeter, but only with master primes on a open rose T1.2 or something. Um, you, you can do that now with, with cheaper lenses on full frame. Okay, another shot from the little short. We shot, um, this short, I got the, ca the camera from Canon, okay? And they landed me for, for a weekend, and we and didn't have time, but then, you know, we figured out we have got three hours. And I met a friend of mine who is also a director, and we met his daughter, this is his daughter, and this is the friend of his daughter, and we had one uh, battery. And that was, you know, three hours of filmmaking. And then was a wrap, naturally, okay? So this is a shot, and you can see this is a medium long shot, and you can see how blurry the background is. This is nice, because you can see where you are, you definitely see this is in kind of, you know, a nice house somewhere. You see the two girls, but it's a kind of long shot thing, right? I like it, it's very cinematic. It actually looks a bit like, like, like anamorphic really, without the artifacts, but it's the same kind of Nice background feeling. Uh, okay. So, what we see uh, with the pixel pitch, we get definitely more res res resolution with the same pixel pitch when we shoot full frame. This has many advantages. One advantage, obviously, we get less noise. When we sample down, let's say, to 4K or even HD video, right? So this is a big advantage, and this also pays into the light sensitivity. We can push a stop more without sacrificing 
um, noise to, or to get to pull out noise. So this is a clear advantage of a more resolution, okay? And with a bigger sensor, often more resolution is coming. So, um, yeah. So when I shoot commercials, I often shoot um, a bit wider than, than I planned because I can do later repositionings and I can react to clients' needs and I can do things later on which, you know, may be important for the story or even just for the client, okay? So when I shoot with a higher resolution, I can better do repositionings, pen scans later on, which is very important nowadays because, you know, people want to change everything every time, right? So, yeah, can be annoying though. So what you see here is, this is a pretty, pretty dark room actually. This is shot with 3600 ISO and it works nicely. No noise really. And this is the reverse shot, almost, let's say in a minute before in the action, the reverse shot and it is lock encoded, right? It's a, it's a video lock encoded shot. Normally, or oh, I always um, do my films in an ACES world, right? So all gradings done in ACES. There are several um, advantages. We can take later on if you like to. We can talk about this later. Uh, yeah. Full frame versus super 35 millimeter. Um, assuming the pixel pitch is the same, we get less frames per second. This is an advantage, really. This is a caveat. This comes naturally with full frame, OK? When I, you know, the full frame, I don't have 100 frames per second, okay? With full frame, I've got 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second. I don't get 100 frames per second. That is not working yet. So what you have to do, to do that, you have to punch into the sensor. You have to sensor crop it, okay? And then you can get higher frame rates. Uh, there are other points which I want to mention. Um, anamorphic, these are old covers. Nice old covers anamorphic glass. Very, very nice looking moody glass. When you, when you do anamorphic, most anamorphic glass is not full frame. It is always super 35 traditionally. And it's very expensive glass. So we want to use the old glass. And it's very important for a camera manufacturer that they also have a super 35 crop to enable anamorphic shooting, okay? This camera can do it. But I haven't shot a Morphe yet with this camera. Okay, there's another thing which is great about full frame. There are tons of lenses around. Millions, really. Okay? And I've been investigating it a bit. It's a new area for me, but investigating a bit. And I found out that there are nice possibilities to dig out in Russia. Right? They are very nice lenses, Russian lenses around, and we have to check them out. We have to figure out what, what they can do. And I've shot with one. It's a 50, I think it's a 56 millimeter. I've forgotten its name, unfortunately. It has a brilliant bokeh, unbelievable bokeh. It's actually very famous. It's from Russia, but there are tons of others around. So this can be a nice thing. Then you can use, for instance, R, R glass. I mean, Leica R glass from the R Leicas. Very, 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 very nice glass. So this might be viable for some, but it doesn't. It's not always workable for everybody because on a on a professional, busy film set, you want straight scene lenses. Okay. So in the beginning of this year, um, Canon approached me and said, "Do you want to test our new cinema primes? They're called Sumire." primes, and they are kind of CNE, CNE glass, different coatings, different, yeah, very, very different, and I come to that now because I shot that little film on the Sumire primes, okay? So here, here for instance, you can see a shot, and what, what do the Sumire primes do? Okay. The Sumir primes are modern glass, very sharp when you stop them down. But when you shoot them wide open, they start to begin, they begin to flare a bit. They get softer, more tender to skin, right? But they keep a certain amount of sharpness. 
So they are, in a way, they are vintage lenses and a kind of double package. Stop down to 2.8 or 4, you get a modern, sharp glass. Right? But when you shoot them wide open, you get a kind of vintage feeling. And they flare very nicely. They flare like they, their famous K35 uh, predecessors. The Sumir lenses are in every way, very, in every way pro lenses. They're very sturdy. They have a long focus throw. They are um, nice to the focus pullers and camera assistants. And they probably last quite a time. Okay, so in the end, for rental houses, I think they're a good investment. Uh, hang on. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is another shot, which I shot in this film, which I'll show you later on. Um, these are the two girls, they're talking, and what you can see is everything is kind of gentle, flary, by not, not flary, but kind of, you know, whitish. No, it's not whitish. It's a kind of tenderness, really. It's lighty. The light gets into the whites, okay, without any filter. I never use filter on, 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 in front of lenses as far as I can do, because, you know, even ND filters are not good news for lens, for the lens, for the front lens. It, it, it distorts, it, it takes away a bit, you know, the characteristics of a lens. So I don't use that. Okay, this is shot open rows. Uh, as you can see here, this is a classic lock-encoded lock video grab, and this is the graded ACES grab. And what you can see is the flare. And the flare is really close to what you can see on the K35s from the 70s, right? It has this very characteristic reddish kind of um, your herbs and, uh, and, and other, you know, kind of flary stuff that is characteristic to the K35s and they really nice match that which is interesting okay what they do better than normal vintage lenses is they hold the color very very well that means on a on a classic vintage lens i come later to that on the Zeiss for instance the Zeiss super speeds when you stop them down they tend to change the color they start off kind of cold, bluish, and when you stop them down, they get more and more warmer. Okay, this is what many, many vintage lenses do. This is my cook zoom doing as well, right? And these aren't doing this. They keep the color, okay? Um, that is modern. That is what you want with modern glass, and that is what they can do compared to vintage lenses. Uh, Canon, I can come back to that. Hang on a second. Where? Okay, here we are. Canon has a color science which can best describe, at least for me, described as a healthy skin look idea. Skin, skin tones tend to look very nice and healthy with Canon glass and Canon cameras. Okay? The color science is orientated to a gentle, friendly, and um, healthy skin tone. And that is what you can see here. These are shots shot with Canon cameras. And they look nice. But I must admit, I'm not always looking for a nice skin tone. There are times when I want a, a different skin tone. Like, for instance, that one. Right? That is more in a porcelain feeling, right? It's, it's, it's more muted and very different, okay? And it's very important to me that a camera can distinguish between skin tones, not we are all looking very different. We are all different people and we look very different. Our skin looks very different. So what we need is we need a camera that is able to differentiate between the different skin tones we have. So she, for instance, has Palestine roots, right? Kind of Arabic roots a bit. And she, Irish roots. Okay, so they have very distinctive different skin tones. And when you shoot that with a cheap camera, they all look same, same, same. She is a bit lighter and she will be a bit, bit darker, but the skin itself, 
and the type is that. It's all the same. It looks a bit like carrots, like orange, like a brownish orange feeling. Okay, so, so for me, it's very, very, very important that a camera is able to render skin tones which are kind of, yeah, let's say delicate. Delicate could be the word. Okay, delicate. And there are only a few around which can do that. Ari, of course, can do that. And uh, the Sony Venice probably can do it. I haven't shot with it. Yeah. And the Canon does it. And even the red cameras can do it if you grade them properly afterwards. So, yeah, this is very important to me. And this is the reason, and this is not only the camera and the sensor and the color science doing, but also the glass. The glass, the lens we use, is in the end the most important thing in this kind of pipeline. First comes the script, then comes, of course, the casting and the direction and the story itself. And, long ago, and then a long, long time, nothing is, you know, it's there. But then is the camera and the lens. And the lens is much more important to me than the camera itself. I can use an airy, I can use a, a red or whatever, but the char characteristics from the image comes from the lens. So this is a vital thing. And for me, the Sumeria do a great job regarding that because they render delicate skin tones. Okay, let's go back to where we were. You can see that here as well, quite nicely. Different skin tones. I mean, you have to see it on a real monitor, of course. This is, this is just a projection, okay? But you, you get what I say, okay? Uh, so we've, we've been talking, yeah. This is what they actually look like. They have a very long focal throw, about 300 de degrees, which is actually um, industry standard for the, um, for Zeiss or for Cook lenses, and, and, and Canon does that as well, which you know most focus pullers really appreciate, and which is for a senior lens a important, yeah, kind of, kind of feature really. Okay. Um, they're very light actually, so when you hold them up, you think, wow, you're light. Okay. I don't know how Canon is managing this, but the same kind of lens from a different. Uh, uh, vendor is more heavy. Um, yeah, that's what I think. They have, they do have chromatic aberrations, okay? They do have that, um, but they're quite good controlled, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, most, most lenses show a bit of chromatic aberration. The, yeah, there are reasons why that is. We don't have to get dig, to, dig into that one, really. Okay. They also have very precise witness marks. So when I, you know, dial in, like, for instance, two meters, and I take the measure from the sensor to the subject, they're exactly two meters, and not one meter 80 or one meter 92, two meters, right? So um, they are very well calibrated, and if they aren't very well calibrated, you can shim them. That means you can put little, little shims into that, that the back focus is tack on. So this is very important, and that is what, what you can do with these lenses, and that is what, what rental houses want. Okay. So again, here we are. So we've been talking about the flares. Flares today is a thing which everybody is craving for, okay? Everybody loves flares. So, you know, every commercial has flares in it. It's it's so far where gone to, went to with gone with the gone went whatever with the with the flares that um, we see many lens manufacturers creating a lens flare series of their line. For instance, Sigma is doing that, Tokin is doing that, even Ari is doing that now. So um, yeah, flares in. That's what people love. Okay. The last thing I want to mention about the Sumir Primes is that they are really fast. They have a T-stop of, most, most of them have a T-stop of T.1.5, which is very fast, okay? Classic super speed. Okay, here you can see a black and white uh, frame grab I shot with a different project. And what you can see is, this is a long shot, a medium long shot. And what you can see is, the background is out of focus. This is because of the, uh, of the, of the full, full frame sensor. And the 
lens itself was a 35 millimeter. That means actually more wide angle than standard. Something around um, 55 degrees, probably. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is the same lens, 35 millimeter lens. Uh, and you can see how the light shot wide open, how the light gets, you know, creeps really into, into the whites. How they tend to blur a bit even, halate kind of halation, but it's very, very tender and very, very subtle. It's nice. The thing about lenses is, I'm talking about these lenses because I've shot with them, but I'm not saying that these are the only lenses one should use, right? These are lenses which are very nice when you want to shoot high resolution, beauty stuff, and you want to see, and you want to have nice skin tones, healthy skin tones, and stuff like that. If you want to shoot um, different things, If you want to shoot things, for instance, shots where you want a flatness, a flat picture, we come to that later, you might not use them because they're quite poppy, they pop a bit, they are kind of three-dimensional uh, um, feel. So a bit even like the Cooks, they are closer to the Cooks than to the Leicas. The Leicas are much, much flatter. Okay. So what we see here is a comparison. I shot... Hang on, I have to check the time. Okay, we've got, I've got time. I shot with the, um, with the Samiris and my old Zeiss HS set I owned and I sold. I actually sold it. And um, the reason is why I sold my super speed set is because they are not full frame anymore. And I love to have full frame lenses. So uh, I, have to, you know, I have to dig for something new and I sold them. But before I sold them, I shot a comparison. And what you can see is, these are the Sumerius, both Sumerius 24 millimeter, uh, uh, but on Super 35 gate, okay? Super, thi super 35 gate, but 24 millimeter. This is, this is about a 35 millimeter full frame kind of angle, okay? Field of view. So what we see is, we see how the Sumerius change their characteristics, okay? This is... tender and almost soft. This is tech sharp, tech sharp, even cut out, right? The, um, the focus, um, the focus, how you call it, the focus roll off changes a lot, right? The focus roll off when you shoot them wide open is long and soft. And the more you stop them down, the shorter the focus roll off becomes. Not every lens is doing this. So what you have, you have a lens which is Yeah, which is both, which is one lens that shows, has two very special characteristics. And um, that's interesting. Okay, I show you now how they compare to Zai Super Speeds. This is the shot we have been looking at before, okay? The exact shot. What you see is a pretty dimensional headshot, okay? It pops a bit, okay? The head pops a bit, it's, it's there, right? His face is rendered a bit thinly. Okay, now we come to the now we come to the Zeiss Super Speeds from the 80s, early 80s. Very different. What you see now is a much bluer cast. This is because the coating of the cannons is optimized for gentle skin tones. The Zeiss at this time didn't care much. They were happy enough to pull off a super speed lens, right? So, what you also can see is, when you compare this shot to the previous Sumira shot, you can see how the shape of his head is changing. Do you see that? You see, here for instance, you see his face in a wider measure, thinner, wider, thinner, wider, thinner. Lenses render people differently. Okay, every lens does that. Okay, so it's important when you want to choose a lens, you want to know what the lens is doing with my people, right? What's doing with, the, with, the, with my actors, okay? When I want to shoot somebody who's, you know, a bit over-nutritioned, yeah? 
a bit, you know, not really on the thin side. You want to shoot him or her perhaps with the cannon glass because it makes the people look more thinner. But then you might, on the other hand, right, thinner. Wider, thinner, wider. On the other, with the Zeiss, you can shoot somebody else. May, may look better on the Zeiss lenses. Okay. The, um, the Boca is a thing which people really, really love to talk about. And this is the Canon mirror lens. And you can see the Boca is fairly round. Fairly round. We don't see any rings. It is soft and round. Size, super speed, different. It's more busy. We say busy. We call that busy. The bokeh is more busy, right? You can see how we get rings around the orbs. Okay? It's different. Cook is doing that as well. Cook lenses are doing that. So, so there might be a reason why you love to have that. It's a matter of taste, actually. Then you take this lens and say, I'm fine. If you want it more flat, you take the size super speeds. If you want it more, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm faster, I, okay. If you want to have it more dimensional, you might take the Sumira, okay? Okay, I have to carry on. And, um, so let's, let's, let's talk about the camera just a bit. So this is the camera, how it looks, I think, out of the box, okay? This is the camera, how I had it. So I had the proper viewfinder. I always have a viewfinder camera. I don't like filming with a monitor. Um, I, have, I want to have it in my triangle. You like your shoulder, eye, and hand. This is a triangle, and the eye is really holding the camera. I need for that a proper viewfinder. Okay, there you have a back with the uh, V-mount battery, and there we were filming. Okay, because we want to see the film, I have to move on a bit, bit, bit quicker. So this is again a film. Thanks for listening, but there's an elephant in the room, okay? The question is, how is the C500 Mark II holding up? And the answer is this. You see, this is exposure at zero. This is exposure minus two, minus two stops. No differences, really. Hardly any differences. Minus four, a big grain get introduced. Minus six, grainy and not usable, usable, but from four to one, you can use it all. And the most important thing is, the colors don't change. That is what we want from a proper camera. We don't want that the camera changes the color rendition, right? Look at how the green is holding up, look at how the yellow, how the green at, on your sleeves here and there, and the yellow and your skin tones and your lips, it's all holding up, okay? So yeah, so this is quite good actually. There are other cameras around which don't do that properly. Okay, play the film please. Um, yeah, and I'm talking while, while, while we're looking at it. What time is it? I don't ah. know, check your phone. Is it? it was in my hand. Same. It's not running here. Okay, anyway. I don't anyway. know, I can't find my phone. Uh, me neither. We had three hours to shoot that film. It was in my We hand. had one battery and we, what, we, we had one card. And we shot it all on, on Cinema Light Raw, which is a bit like Red Raw kind of Where's codec my thing. Where's phone? Your dad probably took it. I hate when he does that. It's so annoying. Dad! Dad! Oh my God. Dad! Maybe he's downstairs. Yeah, let's go check. He's so annoying sometimes. Dad! Why don't you just text him? I don't have my phone. True. That's my phone! No, I'm pretty sure that was mine. I know what my phone sounds like. They all sound the same. Sounds like it's in the kitchen, let's go. Where is it coming from? This is full frame Sounds as well, like classic full outside. frame effect. You, you don't have outside. that with, 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 with Super on, 35. Let's go. Wait, we're all This alone. is the camera's dynamic range. You can even see the little the, the tree shadows a bit, you know? 
You've got a very, very nice wide roll off. No video looks. What if we're not alone? You can look deep into the shadows. Everything is there. Should we go inside? Yeah. Okay, this is a this is the first little film shot on the Canon C500 Mark II, and we had lots of fun with that. Really, <laughs> three hours story on this same same day, and it's an amazing fast camera. You can work really fast with it, and it's a joy to work. It's a proper cinema camera. You can do any Hollywood movie with this camera if you like to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Hans, and yeah, very interesting what you did with the C500 Mark II, and uh, I think we have another session with you later on. Yeah, uh, same, same, same thing? I think about the uh, vintage look, we have the oh, okay. panel we are discussion, talking about oh, no, that's tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow oh, morning. Tomorrow, okay, yeah, okay. 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 thank okay. you everybody thank for you. watching. <laughs>